Hey gang, it's Greg and Janet with Strange RV Tours. Today we're in Corsicana, Texas, and we are visiting the world famous Collins Street Bakery, which I used to actually work here. They are known worldwide for their fruit cakes. Let's go in and check it out. Here we are, and this is their sign, established 1896. Open seven days a week. Free samples, it says, you guys. All right, nice sitting area. Free Wi-Fi, too. Here we go, we got a little historical marker. It opened two blocks north of this site in 1896. August Weidman, huh? Immigrant maker, okay. If you wanna like read all about it, you can pause it here. And since Greg worked here, oh my gosh, it's yeah, a good story. Let's I got a story to tell. Okay, let's go take a look. All right, there's been some. All right, there's been some famous people that stopped here. Will Rogers, uh, John the, McGraw, John McGraw, Ringley Barnard, Bailey guy, mm -hmm. all kinds Enrico of. Enrico Caruso, lots of famous people. Yeah. But, okay, question. Does it look the same? No. <laughs> no, it looks more like a warehouse when I worked here. Oh, really? It's pretty cool. Now, Greg doesn't like fruit cakes. Uh, I've never tried a fruit cake. Really? I've never tried a fruit cake. I looked, I, I, you'll hear the story in a little bit and I'll tell you why I've never tried one. But yeah, I have not ever tried one. Oh my gosh, they, they said free samples. I'm gonna see, let's see. Anyway, okay. This is nice little seating area. There's some celebrities that have been here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Toby Keith, Ernest Borgnine, Robert Urich. There you go. Gene Autry. There you go. Wow. Cool. Cool. Michael York. Yes. All right, guys, these are letters written from all over the world to Collins Street Bakery thanking them for their fruit cakes and telling them how wonderful the fruit cakes are. And this is by far the most famous fruit cake maker in the world. It's amazing how many just millions of fruit cakes they've made over the years. Everybody's heard of Collins Street Bakery. This letter is from 1899. There's the original location. This letter is from Baron Hilton. This letter is from Sinatra. Seven Up Company. President of the Republic of Malawa, Malawi. All right, we're gonna go in the main bakery area and show you guys their goods. All right here, I'm taking over, you guys. So here's some articles but they did submit to the guinness book of world records in 2006 the world's largest fruit cake this was a 183 pound deluxe fruit cake made to the perfect standards and that's pretty cool all right 83 pounds of fruit cake oh my gosh oh yeah this is it the texas Big Tex, and he was the 
big Santa Claus when they bought them. Designed, designed them into big tents for the state fair. Awesome. There you go. They do make breakfast and lunch, you guys. And uh, this one being, of course, Canada. There's one on I-20 near Lindell. And yes, they do sit, serve food throughout the day. But and they're pricey. Yes, they are. If you could see, the regular is thirty-eight dollars, and the medium is fifty-two dollars. So, but I like the pecan cake. That's mm, the Texas blonde. Look, this is the nine ounce. I don't know how much the nine ounce is. Mmm. See, like, see, they have salads made, fruit cups. Pretty neat. Ah. You know. <laughs> Greg brings me here, and I'm on a diet. <laughs> guys. <I'm not. laughs> oh my gosh. There's iced oatmeal, Greg. Pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Sand tarts. I like those. They'd be good. Really good. Well, maybe you'll have to eat one. Yeah, right. Here's some fresh breads, you guys. Jalapeno bread. Hey, mm. But I would look at the fruitcake and I don't know. It just looks weird. <laughs> okay, you trying your first bite? Ever? And? It's really good. Really good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I do. Give me one. <laughs> Let me try it. Let me try it. It's been years. Okay, my turn? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now, how long does it take to make one of these? It takes a long time, huh? Mm, it normally takes about an hour or so for them to get the process up and going. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Good, huh? Mm-hmm. It is good. You're going to do a brownie? Yeah. Okay. All right, he's going to get a brownie. You can split one if you want. If you eat that much, I'm going to do the pecan brownie. Okay. You want? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we get one pecan brownie and one of the sand cookies, what you call it? Sand tart. Sand, sand tart. tart? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Okay, guys, there is a story that goes along with this location. Back in 2013, Sandy Jenkins was caught embezzling $13 million. All right, his wife, Kay Jenkins. They had boats, they had cars, they had jewelry, they had all this stuff, right? Um, and nobody really questioned about it. I don't get it, but FBI came in, uh, forensic file people came in, and they made the newspapers, and they were going to make a movie about it, y'all. With Will Ferrell. It's called Fruitcake Fraud, you know? But there's a documentary about it. You can live stream it, like stream it, I mean, on Amazon and, and uh, Discovery Plus. But yeah, they said that this place normally would make like 30 million. And all of a sudden, their their sales had dropped. I mean, year 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 after year after year, they were making about the same amount, and then it dropped. And they really didn't realize it till it was too late. But anyway, they made the news that way. Here's my Collins Street Bakery work fruitcake story. 
Janet loves me for me to tell this story. I don't know why. She thinks it's hilarious. In 1985, I was going to school here at Navarro College in Corsicana. And I would come down this road right here in front of the bakery on my way either to school coming from home in Plano, Texas, or occasionally on the weekends, I would drive home to Plano, Texas, and I'd drive this street right here, and I'd always pass this bakery. And around late October, early November, I saw a sign that they were looking for people to deliver fruitcakes for the Christmas season in this local area. And so I talked to one of my roommates. He said, oh yeah, I, my brother did that a couple years ago, and he made really good money. So I thought, okay, great, I'll go down there and put in an application. Well, they had about, I don't know, eight, ten people that were delivering fruitcakes for Christmas. But I got the job. And I started delivering fruitcakes here, and I had never had a fruitcake. Today was the first time I've ever actually tried a fruitcake. And I liked it. I really did, which kind of surprised me. Because, to me, when you look at a fruitcake, it's not appealing. It looks kind of like a... What would you call it, Jana? A, like a bun, bunt cake or something, but it has, looks like jellies in it. Like jujubes or dots. Remember the dots you used to see at the movie theaters? <laughs> like that. And I look at this thing and I think, eh, it just, it doesn't look good at all. So, on my last day of work here at the Collins, at the Collins Street Bakery, I ended up with a fruitcake. I don't remember if I purchased it or if they gave it to me as a Christmas present, but I didn't know what to do with it. So I took it home with me to Plano, and I, like I said, I didn't know what to do with it. I wasn't going to eat it because it just looked strange to me. So I wrapped it up, and I gave it to my mother and father for Christmas. Well, that year, we opened up our presents from family, from just my mother and father and me, on New Year's or Christmas Eve. So we opened up our presents. Mom and Dad opened this fruitcake, and they looked at it, and they're like, and I was like, you guys don't like fruitcake? And they're like, no, we, uh, we don't like fruitcake. So it was like, well, I'm sorry. So anyways, the next day we were meeting the rest of our family, our extended family, to open up presents with all of them. Unbeknownst to me, mom and dad really didn't like fruitcakes. So they rewrapped it up. And my, mo my mother would always have one or two presents that would be like uh, cookies or candies that she would wrap up in case somebody showed up that we weren't expecting and she'd have a present for him. So she ends up giving this fruitcake. fruitcake to my father's brother for Christmas. He opens it up and his face was exactly like mom and dad's. He was like, <laughs> and so anyways, uh, he was like, I, I don't eat fruitcake. And so anyways, I'm not joking, for like five more years, every Christmas, a different family member would get that same fruit cake. They would just keep it all year and then rewrap it up and give it to another family member. And I don't think that they realized we knew it was the same fruit cake. But at one time, like three or four years later, my parents got that fruit cake back. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the best Christmas present ever because you never had to pay for it. You just give it to different people, yeah. you know. It's regifting. So. It's, it's a new term, regifting. Yeah. But I was not about to try that fruitcake because it just looked odd to me. But I actually tried it today and I actually liked it. So I've been missing out on fruitcakes for 30 years, 35 years. Right. Now, now I do like fruitcake, but not too much of it. So, I, But they are expensive to make. If you buy the candied pineapple, the candied apple, uh, pineapple, uh, apple, and cherries, and and the nuts it is expensive to make don't forget the jujubes and dots <laughs> yeah but you know their little nine ounce cake here is 22 dollars for the and i was wanting to get the pecan one because i do like the pecan cakes too but i worked in retail grocery for years and they used to we get the little strips of fruit cake i'd buy at least one of those one of the nut ones every year and I do enjoy it. Yeah. But you know, it's yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those. I, I could, 
have a piece of fruit cake around the holiday season, but I wouldn't want to eat it year round. Yeah. I just yeah. wouldn't. Okay. So, but this is the Collins Street Bakery, the world famous Collins Street Bakery, and they're still going strong today. Well, this wasn't a real adventure, but there was a story that went along with this, along with Greg's history. Well, anyway, we share what we do, and I hope you enjoyed it. So hit the like button for us, and uh, hit the notification bell, and you can check out our Patreon too. We do stuff there too. All right, take it easy. Strange RV tours will take you places With Greg and Janet's smiling faces You might see a crazy flavored soda review Or some tips to fix your RV too So come along, won't you join us, friend As we discover what's around the bend Just sit right back in your easy chair Strange RV Tours is on the air. Strange RV Tours is on the air.